Okay, we're gonna look at this. We play Smith. Um, so you picked Alchemist second phase, which means that you only saw their two supports, the Witch Doctor and the Tusk. I think Alk is fine into both of those. Um, there's not like any blazing issue or something like if there was an AA or something then you know maybe you consider not picking a hero or some other like uh, hard counter or something um, but those heroes are fine you just kind of have to understand like what they mean so it's like Tusk is going to hit you in the lane Witch Doctor is going to put uh, Malediction on you and, and Death Ward I think Alka is pretty good versus Witch Doctor in general because you have a lot of regen and Witch Doctor is countered by regen uh, but Tusk is a vessel buyer and can hold you down and give you some harass in the lane and stuff like that, which can be annoying. But obviously not too hard to work around if you're strong. Um, you have a support Chen. You have Jose versus Beastmaster. Very, very good matchup for you guys. This lane is like incredible. Um, I think Chen solves a lot of the issues that Alchemist has in the lane um, and just like straight annihilates Beastmaster. Like I, I can't... I don't know if there's any other hero in the game I would rather play. Uh, I would, um, yeah, rather play Chen versus it than Beastmaster. Uh, it's so impossible to, to play this this lane as Beastmaster if the Chen has even half of a brain cell. Um, literally even half. So the build that you have, I think, is wrong. I don't think you've adjusted to the lane and to your support. Um, so what Chen does is... He buys Headdress, he's going to get a point in his E, or at least he should. Uh, having looked already, I know Jose goes e, uh, W and then Q, which he shouldn't. He should go like W and then E, but whatever. We're not going to harp too much on Jose here. Um, and then the other thing that Chen should do, the last thing I'll mention, is he should just take this boar every time it's summoned. So it's a very low cooldown, 15 second cooldown on his boar steel. And then call the wild boar cooldown is 42 seconds level one, and it goes down to 13. So basically, Beastmaster should never, ever, ever have a boar in this lane, which means that like you guys have a Beastmaster and they don't. Like you just swapped, <laughs> like you just swapped heroes. Um, so really great matchup. Um, that being said, the kind of damage that you're gonna take in this lane is purely physical. So I don't feel like you've itemized to take physical damage at all. Um, you have. Three Tingles and a Salve, that's some good regen. You have this Gauntlet of Strength to give you some last hitting thing. I think what you should have done is ditch the Salve um, and then buy a Ring of Protection since you're building that into a Soul Ring anyway. Um, and because the damage mitigation that you get from the armor is going to be more significant um, in the long run than the Salve. And the reason for that is when you have innate regen, like there's, there's going to be a lot of time this game where you're sitting like like how you are right now with 5.9 regen. Um, if he has this point, then it goes up to like eight. So you've basically like, your support is a ring of health for you, right? The Like the ring of health that you would buy for a Battle Fury, your support is basically that for you already. Um, he's giving you that regen. So while you have regen, you're still gonna take significant damage. So if you can mitigate that damage by buying armor or like something else that would like a cloak, for example, if you're versus like a Skyrath Mage, if you can buy something that mitigates that damage that you'll take, then you're going to feel very invincible in the lane, right? Because you don't take damage, and any damage they manage to do with all their tools just gets regened up really quickly. Um, <clears throat> so, that's itemization. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about going into this is your skill choice. Um, you can trust me and just skip a couple seconds while I talk about it, but you need to get your Q level 1 in every situation. Um, until that changes, <laughs> you just have to get Q level 1. So the reason for it is uh, bounty runes at minute 0 are worth 40 gold. You get a 1.5 multiplier on that, which means you get 60 gold for every bounty rune. Um, so at most, if you get all four runes, you get an additional 80 gold, which just really is not that much. Um, and that's in like the crazy situation that you got all four bounty runes with an alchemist, which is just unlikely because the enemy team is going to make sure that they at least get one, right? Um, huh. and then the other thing is that you only get an additional three base gold or in three bonus gold for every last hit so th what that means is you get a last hit and you get an additional three gold because you're passive and then your next last hit if you do it quick enough you're going to get six bonus gold right and that multiplier goes up then it's nine then it's twelve all the way up to eighteen um, max at level one so 
how many last hits do you need to miss in order to make up 80 gold plus, you know, let's say 20 to 30 from your thing. It's like, it's not a lot of last hits. It's like three or four last hits. So um, that in combination with the fact that this doesn't provide any like lane control, right? Like acid spray does damage, it zones, it makes it easier for you to get last hits. If they're trying to trade with you, then like you can man up under acid spray with a ring of protection. Um, it just gives you a lot of stuff and just makes you much stronger in the lane. Um, and so like, like I said, either take my word for it or do the math and just see that acid spray level one is just way better. <clears throat> um, one other thing I forgot to mention that I saw is you went, you actually went and got this bounty room, which I think is like kind of insane. Um, they have a tusk, they have a beastmaster, they have a timber saw. Like the odds of all three of these heroes being here is like really, really freaking high, and the odds of like tusk just pressing tag team and then beastmaster hitting you with his hero and two boars. It's like all of a sudden you got four things with tag team hitting you. Um, I know the boars don't proc tag team, but like two heroes with tag team and then the two boars. They've got an orb of venom. Timber could be here and press Q or, or like some spell on you. Like there's just no way that you. There's no way that you should think about going. I think it's okay that you like a little bit cautious and see that they're not there. But like you need to be omega careful. Um, they can just be standing right here in the trees, trying to bait you into thinking it's safe. As soon as you walk down the hill, they scout you with this hawk that's sitting here, and then they just follow you down because you don't have vision of them, and then you die. So risky play. Happen to pay off this game, I would say should never ever be attempted again. Um, I don't want to talk too much about the lane. Uh, Jose like basically plays like I, I I think I said it takes half a brain cell, and I'm pretty sure Jose only has a quarter of a brain cell because he does it like 50% of the time he makes the right play, and then the other 50% he like makes some random play. So he should just be taking the boar every time it's up, um, and he takes it like the last like it's been alive for 30 seconds or something he summons a new one it's just weird um i would be telling jose to to just steal the board constantly which he probably would but... these acid sprays are okay you want to make sure that you're able to go and get the range creep in these situations um if not then you can back up not too big of a deal you should be stacking him i would stack here myself since jose already pulled um and then here, you, for some reason, hold a wave in your tower. And I think what you need to be doing instead is forcing them to force you to pull the wave under your tower. So if you just stand outside of the tower range here, you know, if we go like super slow, we can look at it. If we, go, if we just stand right outside of the tower range where I'm pinging, then they have, a, they have uh, an obligation, right? It's, they don't want you to just be standing there holding the creep wave because two things is going to happen. One, you're not going to miss any last hits because you're not contested at all unless they show and there's no creeps. And then the other thing is the equilibrium will favor you because you're going to have creeps there and then your wave is going to come and there's going to be what's left of their wave and then your fresh wave and Jose was able to kill like one or two something. Uh, and so you're going to have equilibrium, and then the wave is just going to be in a much better place. So they really have to force you to pull the creep wave under tower. But instead, you make that decision for them. Um, and it's possible that, like, you're thinking two steps ahead, right? You're like, okay, if I hold it, they're going to come hit me, and I have to pull it under tower anyway, so I might as well just do that. But, like, but you want to force them to do that because it doesn't cost you anything, and it costs them time. So what instead happens is they go and hit your support. They probably should have killed him. Um, but they had snowball instead of shards because they're extremely bad and then you feel like you need to run over here and do some like totally random acid spray that makes no sense and now the wave is pushing so like all of a sudden you had a pretty decent situation and then you just kind of like um you didn't make them do something and then all of a sudden like they got away with everything and accomplished what they wanted Here again, somebody should be stacking and pulling. Either of you do. So, like this is just equilibrium stuff. Jose takes your range creep. You would have thought he learned from when Lisa got mad at him, but nope. Um, at this point already, it's level three. I would have two points in my queue, and I would be basically done with this wave, with the way that my support was playing, with the way that it was going. It's like it's already mode efficiency here. Um, 
I'm going to be acid spraying the, the wave if I have to. Ideally, I don't, but if I have to, I will. Um, basically, have to means is Beastmaster contesting me or not. If he's contesting me, then I'll acid spray. I think your placements are totally fine. No need to talk about those. Uh, skill build is wrong. Should be maxing your Q first. Um, here, I would just like draw aggro or acid spray. This is fine. And again, it's like you should just be playing the efficiency game. Shove the wave into the jungle. The faster you shove and harder you shove the wave, the more time you get to be in the jungle before you have to come back. And you're not really looking to play this lane. Um, we're going to watch in a minute that you're going to die like four times in the exact same way because you feel like you have to be getting every last hit in the lane, which is completely not true. Again, like. Here, as soon as he gets this death, I honestly don't have an issue with other than the fact that you killed yourself. Um, I think you should have died here even if you didn't kill yourself. I think he just messed up. Um, if he had two points in his passive, then you would have died. Um, so, basically what I'm saying is, like, I would have... I think most people would die here. It was a very, very tight timing. He got really... Um, like, everything lined up for Beastmaster perfectly. Like, you're out of position, you're kind of low, he gets his Necro Book in level 6, like, at the same instant, he's got a bore up because your Chen is, like, AFK, um, you don't have any armor items, you don't have boots, he gets the body down for a long time. Like, this is a very, very good situation. Now, you happen to live because, like I said, he's bad, and then you kill yourself off of that. But at this point, like, this exact moment, this lane is different. The only reason you're ever, ever, ever going to be in this lane is because you're trying to save your tower. Um, and there's a couple ways that you can do that. Like, you can just straight acid spray the wave and walk away. Um, and the way and the creeps will just die. Um, if it's safe, you can farm it. The odds of it being safe when Beastmaster and Tusk are here, or if Beastmaster's here and you don't see Tusk, then, like... You have to respect that threat. Like here, farming these creeps is totally fine. Walk away. You're in the jungle now. This wave pushes, let it push. Just like, you're here with no ulti, and they know that. So they should have just killed you there, but they didn't. And then, you have another chance. Instead, they kill Jose. And then, you don't realize how ridiculously strong their two heroes are when they have all their summons up. Your tower is getting annihilated. And if you were alive and it just put Acid Spray and not done anything there, then you would have more farm and your tower would be healthy. So again, it's like the exact same kind of death. You just like have some weird obsession for this tower. And then yet again, you're TPing down here. It's like you've died three times, you have no farm. You're behind. And you're running straight back into the hero that causes you the most grief right now. Like, leave. If Puck wants to stay here and chase, then let him. Leave. You don't have open. You don't have items. So you do finally leave. Um, I think at this point the game is like, it should be over, honestly, like you guys should just lose, but you guys are better than the team, so you win anyway. Um, but you need to look at this and just be like, just look at this situation and think, how can I get the most farm out of this with the least amount of bad, right? It's like, what is bad? Losing your tower is bad, right? Dying is bad. So you're trying to have your tower take as little damage as possible without dying. Right? It's like that's one of your goals. And then the other goal is to get farm. Um, now, if your tower dies, or you die, then you don't get farm. Which means that if you die trying to protect your tower, <laughs> like, uh, or, or if you're not protecting your tower, that's bad. But if you're protecting your tower so much that you die, that it's also bad. So you have to find this, like, middle ground of, like, what's the most amount of farm I can get without dying? And how do I slow down their push as much as possible without dying? 
Um, I already talked about it before. It's like, just acid spray the creep wave and walk away. It's like, when you have ult, maybe you can acid spray, get a couple last hits, and then you run to the jungle until you have it again. So it's like, at 14 minutes, you should be, like, you should have your Battle Fury, you should have whatever boots upgrade you want, and probably, like, most of a Yasha or Assange, whatever you're going for. Um, like, fairly easily. I think this lane was, like, ridiculously easy. Um, it gets incredibly difficult when he gets... Uh, levels plus Necro and Tusk gets levels. So it's like when they get their level advantage, their their level power spikes are higher than yours. Um, like especially this like Necro book timing just like dumpsters every hero. So you got to get out at that point. Um, what I would do is go into a lobby and just practice like getting as much farm as possible from like this lane or from this lane. That way you can learn the farming patterns. You can learn like, okay, how many points in my queue do I need? before I can like take the hard camp like reasonably. Um, but a few very general things that we can talk about is first max your Q, get, get level one Q, then you can get Grievous Green and then max your Q. As soon as you have two or three points and ask the spray, you should like, unless your lane is completely like literally empty, then you should be thinking about the jungle already. Um, if it is completely empty, then you should be pushing the wave like shove it as far as you can get it under their tower farm the wave will come back naturally because the tower will kill your creeps you're going to do damage to the tower it will come back then you push it you take you know the double wave that's there the next wave the next wave then you go to the jungle um and you're just trying to hit as many creeps as possible and you're less worried about getting all of the last hits in the wave as much as you are keeping your towers alive to protect your jungle because that's really where you thrive is in the jungle um <clears throat> Here, this death, like, you're just behind. If you have Sanjin Yasha and you're going to get a there, that goes fine, but you don't, because you have no farm. So, you're playing like you're strong when you're weak. Like, even here, I wouldn't even waste the mana on that guy. It's like, you're just there for the freeze. Like when you're actually farming the jungle and you're not feeding, you farm decently. But like you just need to get to that point faster. It's not an item thing, it's a... Like you wait until you feel like you can't do anything else and you should be looking at this. Anyway, I don't think I want to watch much more. I think you've ruined your own game sufficiently. For my taste, I would go into a empty lobby and I would practice the laning phase versus nothing because I felt like you laned versus no heroes. Um, like they didn't threaten you at all until they got level 6. So it's like just learn how fastly, how fast can you get out of that lane and into the jungle um, and be efficient. And go for like some 15 minute, you know, Sanjin Yasha boots fury timing or something. Uh, it's not too difficult. I may actually just try it right now so I can give you an example. So there you go.